Hi, and welcome to this demo of TIBCO Spotfire and Brightlight's GPU Accelerated Database. In this video, I'm going to walk through a few examples of how using these two products together, we can analyze and explore very large volumes of data interactively and still use all of Spotfire's advanced analytics functions. The data set I'm using is the New York Taxi Rides data set, which contains just over a billion taxi journeys made in New York between 2010 and 2016. It's all loaded into a Brightlight database running on a single Amazon AWS P4 instance, uh, which is configured with eight NVIDIA A100 GPUs. And Spotfire itself is running on a Windows Power Pro instance in a, an AWS workspace with 32 gig of RAM. So here we can see a Spotfire dashboard showing a map of New York with all of the taxi pickup locations and a set of charts and graphs on the right. The map uses the latest Spotfire mod API and connects to the GPU powered Brightlight backend to do the actual map rendering. In this case, we're generating a heat map showing the density of taxi pickups in each area covered roughly by a pixel. And because we don't have a billion pixels on the screen, we're rendering a more useful visualization aggregated at around about the pixel level. Now remember, we're act interactively querying 1.1 billion records here. As we pan around the map, we're regenerating the tiles based on the data in the database. And also as we zoom in, a pixel covers a smaller and smaller area of the map. So we see more detail appearing right down to the individual data points. And as we zoom out, a pixel covers a wider and wider area. So we start to see the broader trends and patterns in the data. Notice also that the charts are updating as I navigate around the map. And that's because the map is acting as a filter for the charts. Only the data points we can see in the visible area of the map are being included in the charts. So they're always in sync. Of course, we can still use all of Spotfire's filtering and marking capabilities to drill into specific areas of interest as well. The pie chart here, for example, shows a breakdown of the payment types used for each journey. And we can use marking to focus in on just the credit card transactions. Down here, we can see a slight increase in credit card usage over time. Or we could go back and look at just the cash transactions. And here we can clearly see a decrease in the use of cash payments over time as well. Again, notice that all the charts are updating to reflect the marked data and requerying the full data set at the back end. Uh, we could also use more complex visualizations like this heat map that's showing how many journeys are being taken at different times of day over the week. And we could focus in on just the morning rush hour, for example, by selecting just those hours we're interested in or we could just look at the weekends. It doesn't matter how we slice and dice the data because we're querying the raw detail records. This means we're not constrained by any pre-calculated aggregations or summaries in order to get the performance and response times we need, even with billion row data sets. Now there are some analytics functions in Spotfire that work exclusively within memory tables. But a billion records is a little bit too big for the memory in the Windows machine running Spotfire, and it would also take quite a while to download. So to get around this, we can use the speed of bright light to dynamically generate on-the-fly subsets and aggregates that are loaded on demand into Spotfire. This means we can still use all of Spotfire's built-in functions to investigate specific areas of interest. As a simple demonstration, I've set up an in-memory table that only gets populated when the number of filtered and marked rows goes below 30,000 records. And this number is shown at the top right here. So let's say we wanted to use a forecasting function to predict the number of taxi journeys to expect over the coming days. We can filter down to the last month of data that we have in the data set, which is June 2016. And now we can see the number of records has reduced, but it's still up in the millions and a little bit too big to download into, into an in-memory table. So let's just drill into all the journeys that were discounted. Now the number of filtered and marked rows is now dropped below 30,000 and an on-demand update has been triggered in the background. And if we switch to page two, which shows the on-demand table, we can see here it contains the same number of records as we saw filtered and marked on the previous page. 
Now, in the graph, the yellow line here is the actual number of yellow cab pickups per hour for June, and the white line is a forecasting function, with the forecast shown as the white dotted line over here on the right. If I go back and change the filtering and marking, um, we'll get a different set of records, and we'll dynamically update the on-demand table in real time and recalculate the forecast graph, as you can see here. Another example of where we can use Spotfire and Brightlight together is on the rich visualizations that Spotfire supports and using them against the full detail table containing one billion rows. Here we have a 3D scatter plot using the external taxi table. Now this looks very nice and we can go in and drill in further and show a breakdown of, for example, the payment types. So we click on this and the chart updates instantly, all against 1.1 billion rows. And lastly, by populating the on-demand in-memory tables, we can also use any tear or Python function available in Spotfire. Here I've used the speed and performance of Brightlight to join the taxi data table with a weather data table covering the same period of time. I've then populated an on-demand and in-memory table and applied a Python correlation function to it to generate this correlation table and then visualized that with a heat map so we can see which, which columns affect each other. Now Spotfire is a very functionally rich analytics and visualization tool and we've only really scratched the surface in this video but I hope it's demonstrated the value of using Spotfire together with the Brightlight GPU accelerated database to deliver snappy interactive performance on very large data sets. In summary we looked at GPU accelerated maps using the Brightlight map mod and the Brightlight map tile service, GPU accelerated charts using the Brightlight GPU accelerated query engine and GPU accelerated aggregation and loading of on-demand in-memory tables so you can use all of Spotfire's built-in functions including the TER and Python functions. If you'd like to find out more about how Brightlight's GPU database can accelerate Spotfire please contact us at brightlight.com. Thank you very much.